Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got another shop talk video. Now, I recently made a video that talked about me leaving the field and being in a warranty company for a while as a administrator and as an adjuster. And uh, I just figured I would do a video regarding how it was working inside of a warranty company. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we go ahead and do so guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe button down below. And with that said, let's go ahead and start on today's topic. So what was it like working for the actual warranty company, guys? Like my experiences through there. Now, even though in the video that uh, I made sharing that I love the field to work for a warranty company uh, was uh, mostly positive, there were some negatives working for this sort of company. Now, the group that I worked for, guys, uh, what it was, it was a third-party warranty company um, that, you know, had a lot of subdivisions of smaller companies that, you know, sold extended warranties through various names. But at the end of the day, we were the big company that took care of, like, the payments and everything. Now, the way warranty companies work, and that's the main premise of this video, guys, is to save themselves money. It's basically, uh, the best way to put it is if they're charging you $300 for the warranty, they're going to try to pay out the least amount of money from that 300 that they can um, just to kind of you know help themselves now obviously uh, most repairs are gonna be more than $300 and that's not realistic guys but the way they generally work is when you buy an extended warranty and you're paying let's say $2,000 for it for a couple years yeah they also take money from probably hundreds if not millions of other people buying cars that buy into the warranty and then they build up their money basically they're getting money uh, for a contract that says we will be responsible to fix these items But what a lot of people fail to miss is that they'll say hey, you know We're only gonna be fixing up to X amount or up to this coverage amount or this or that they have little stipulations in there now uh, there was a lot of stipulations uh, that I dealt with guys. I'll give you guys a couple uh, stories in uh, this video uh, just to kind of help you guys understand and you know understand my thought process when I worked there. So uh, what we did a lot of the warranty company guys were uh, let's say uh, a shop called in and said hey this vehicle needs a starter here's the policy number this is the owner and gave us all the information uh, and then they would say hey you know the starter we could get for $200 on the part. Uh, and it's an hour labor, so it's a hundred bucks, and it comes out to three hundred dollars. Now, my job was to cut it down, so I was looking for cheap starters. You know, I'd look at all the parts listings and say, "Hey, uh, listen up. You know, you guys are trying to use this starter. We found this starter, and it's seventy-five dollars. Can you guys use the starter that we want you to use, or what? Or what's going to happen?" And you know, some shops would be like, "Okay, we'll use it. We can source it. We'll buy it." Uh, some shops would just be like, "Nope, absolutely not." And then uh, there would be even some situations where shops would, you know, be like, you know what, yeah, I'll use it, but you got to send it to me. And, you know, that would require us purchasing it, shipping it out. And, you know, they were kind of smart, the ones that did that, because 99% of the time it would be a bluff, guys. When we would uh, call out some parts prices and things like that, we would just be bluffing. I remember uh, me once, I was on a phone call and they were trying to charge us. Uh, it was for a transmission. They said that the cheapest one they could get was like $3,000. And I just completely bluffed them. I was like, listen, I should a listing here it's at this junkyard it has less miles than the one that you're quoting and this and that and i can pay 1500 bucks for it ship it to your door uh so are you guys going to be able to do it that way or do you want to just you know sell me your transfer 1500 and then the advisor was like, okay you know what okay we'll match it we don't send us anything we'll use our trans we'll match it to 1500 and you know that was a big win for me i'm scoring there because i'm saving money and that was kind of the job there guys it's always to undercut and try to get you know the cheapest price or the cheapest thing possible uh to be able to pay out on someone's car and that's what a warranty basically is um even though there were a lot of contracts that we were uh, very, I guess you could say savvy with and very cheap with and we would try to do anything to save a dollar, um, there were situations where I ran into that, you know, let's say it was a big company, let's say they have fleets of cars and trucks and they would actually buy into some of the medium level contracts that didn't have a lot of high coverages. And uh, sometimes, you know, I'd get a phone call saying I need this and I would wind up, you know, saying, sorry, you guys don't have the coverage. And that would land me into a situation with my boss where he would tell me, why'd you deny coverage for this? They have hundreds of thousands of cars with us. They give us millions of dollars a year. We approve anything and everything they need. And I would look at them like, wait a second, 
the contract, which is my job to make sure I follow contract terms and only pay out on what's covered, you're telling me just throw it out the door so all everything that I'm supposed to be doing for my job, just throw it out the door and if I see this company calling, I'm just going to accept it. And it would be a little nonchalant, like, yeah, 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 that's what we do. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, I don't want to get yelled at anymore or be in this situation. So next time they call in, they need $10,000, hey, here's your approval code. I don't really care. They told me to approve it. And the next day, I'd find myself in the hot seat again where why'd you approve ten thousand dollars you should have cut it down it should have been seven this i'm like hey listen you guys told me approve it i approved it what do you want and then they you know make up some uh bs like oh well we heard the conversation you didn't even try i'm like again when i try you yell at me and then you tell me don't try and then i don't try and then i'm being yelled at again um that was actually a real scenario that happened guys um i got yelled at for denying this company coverage and then they called their boss who was good with, I guess you can say the higher up in our company. Uh, they had a conversation and then that led to me being yelled at on why I didn't approve a claim that had no coverage on the contract that they were uh, trying to get coverage for. Uh, it's completely set on there. It was a stipulation that said, we do not cover this. And they were trying to get it covered. I denied it. I get yelled at. They made me call them back and you know, accept it and approve it, which kind of made me bite my tongue, guys, because the service advisor, when I denied it, was really cocky. He's like, oh, yeah, you're really going to deny it? Well, we'll see about that. And then they had me call the guy back, and it was the same guy, and he was so cocky. He's like, oh, yeah? He's like, so who's calling me with an approval now? I just want to be like, you know, let's just say, say the not-so-nice things to him. And it kind of, you know, pissed me off because I had situations like that. It's, I followed the contract. But either way, guys, um, it was just a lot of situations like that. Getting back to the whole thing was uh, I denied it, didn't have coverage, I get yelled at, then they call me again for something again that didn't have coverage, uh, I approved it, and then I'm getting yelled at on why I didn't even try to lower the price. I'm like, you guys said, don't piss them off. But either way, it is what it is. Um, that's just how warranty companies are, guys. Um, I guess this video, I don't know exactly what my aim is going to be. It's just basically me explaining how it was working for them. But to give you guys a little bit of advice, um, when you do buy a aftermarket third-party warranty for your vehicle, make sure you read the contract terms, guys. Ask the dealer. I want to see the policy or the stipulations in the contract because sometimes they'll have stupid coverages. Like I remember uh, we had... Uh, coverage on a vehicle it was like we'll cover the wheel bearing but if the wheel bearing damages the axle it doesn't cover it so it's kind of stupid what kind of a policy will cover a wheel bearing but not an axle they have to work together um you know so there's little stipulations like that that you got to watch out for so if you ever buy a third party extended warranty make sure you read the fine print because sometimes you think you're buying one thing and you're you know just getting about half coverage guys um and that's kind of my experience with uh warranty companies um even though uh you know I, it was a great time working for them. There was a lot of little things like that, guys, that at the end of the day would just kind of piss me off because there was some poor old lady or poor guy that bought into this warranty thing and they would cover certain things and then they'd find out that we're only covering half or we're not covering it or if you want us to cover it, you got to take it out of the dealership and you got to take it to this mom and pop shop that may or may not be as good or may or may not know what they're doing, but you know we had to do it anyway just to save a buck. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's what kind of led to uh, me not liking what I did towards the end because you know it just you know ruins a lot of people's days and I didn't want to be that guy even though I wasn't the one making the call it was you know based off the policies and everything it was uh, still not one of those things that I like to do I don't like uh, being the breaking news guy and you know give people bad news so you know that's what a lot of warranty companies do Duh. it's just you know save money try to undercut everyone everything and keep as much profit as they can uh, and just try to keep the money coming in by selling the warranties and paying them out the the least amount so they can make more and more money and that's just how it works so that pretty much sums up uh, how warranty companies work guys and you know i included a couple stories in there for you um, i know this video doesn't really uh, cover like too much it's kind of like a rant style video with you know my uh two cents on the topic but, uh, you know, I figured I'd share it anyway, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So uh, with that said, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. It definitely helps the channel grow. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.